Hi guys, my name is Elise. Welcome back to another week with the Foundry Kids and welcome to week two of our December series called The Big Give. In this December series, we are getting ready for Christmas, which is the birth of Jesus. And so I am loving telling you guys these Christmas stories. And I've got another great story from the Bible about the birth of Jesus today to share with you. So I can't wait to share this lesson with you. But before we do, we are going to stand up and sing a song. I remember thinking when I was a little bit smaller That all my days would be filled with happiness and fun But then I discovered it's not that easy Some days can get you down but the rest is up to us I won't hesitate to see something great Cause I choose, I choose joy, joy. And a little bit of laughter To spin some bad luck into a real good time It doesn't matter what life brings You gotta focus on the bright side You can be thankful, we can be grateful The choice is yours and mine I won't hesitate to see something great Cause I choose, I choose joy, joy. Some Christmas lights. Oh, there ain't nothing like the Christmas joy. Let's go, sing it out. I want some Christmas cookies. I wanna see some Christmas lights. Oh, there ain't nothing like the Christmas joy. Merry Christmas, everybody. All the lights are bright, snow on the ground. I hear the jingle bells jingling all around. Oh, oh, oh. There ain't nothing like the Christmas joy. Today's Bible lesson comes from the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 5 through 66. Yes, this is a pretty long story for you guys, and we are going to tell it in just a short amount of time, but it's full of great stuff. So we are going to be talking about Mary, who is Jesus's mom, and how she was getting ready to have her baby, Jesus. And we're also going to talk about Jesus' cousin. Yeah, Jesus had a cousin, and his name was John. Um, they actually call him John the Baptist uh, because of some stuff he does later on in his life for God that's really, really cool. But when he's born, his name is just John. And he was Jesus' cousin, so we're going to learn about the birth of John the Baptist, too. So let's get into our story. It's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the third book of the New Testament, Luke. But 
Before Luke, in the very beginning, out of love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to bless the whole world through Abraham's family, the Israelites. But over and over, God's people would run to God and then pull away, just like a yo-yo. Then, foreign nations invaded and captured the Israelites. They must have wondered if God still loved them and had a plan for them. While they were captive, God spoke through prophets about the great rescuer God would send. But then, for hundreds of years, silence. Not a single recorded word from God. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone! So, we have made the leap from the stories of the Jewish people we find in the Old Testament in our Bibles to the stories of Jesus and the church we find in the New Testament. And we're about to see how God's amazing rescue plan plays out. But it's been a long wait, like hundreds of years. God's people are now ruled by the Romans. They're not free. And there's still a lot of work God has to do in their hearts. There was a priest named Zechariah. He and his wife, Elizabeth, faithfully served God, but they had no children. Zechariah and Elizabeth had prayed over and over and over to have a baby, but they believed they were past the age it could ever happen. Then, one day, Zechariah was chosen to enter the temple and burn incense before God while his group of priests was serving. This was an amazing opportunity for Zechariah. As Zechariah stood before the altar, a glorious angel from God appeared before him. Zechariah was totally blown away, but the angel told him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will have a child. You must call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit before he's even born and bring back many people to God. He will prepare the way for the Lord. Whoa! Zechariah's mind must have been reeling. I mean, God was promising a child and not just any kid, but one who would be a powerful leader for God. How can I be sure of this? I'm an old man and my wife is old too. I am Gabriel. I serve God. I have been sent to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent until after John is born because you did not believe my words. Ouch! Zachariah didn't have anything to say to this because he couldn't. God had taken away his ability to speak. When he left the temple, the other priests tried to find out why Zachariah had been in there so long, but he could only tell them in gestures, like charades. It must have been a double shock for Elizabeth when Zachariah got home. Not only was he unable to speak, but he had a pretty unbelievable story to share. She must have been overjoyed though, when God's words came true and she became pregnant. The Lord, the Lord has been kind to me. He has taken away my shame among the people. Now, Elizabeth and Zachariah's story wasn't over, but we need to take a quick detour. Because several days' journey away in the town of Nazareth, Elizabeth's cousin Mary was about to receive some amazing news too. Mary was just an ordinary girl living in an ordinary small town. But even though her life seemed perfectly ordinary, her heart was not. Mary loved and worshipped God with everything she had. And one morning, a glorious messenger from God appeared to Mary. Greetings. The Lord has blessed you in a special way. Mary was completely shocked. Obviously. I... I don't understand what you're telling me. Do not be afraid, Mary. God is very pleased with you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son. You must call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High God. The Lord God will make him a king and he will rule forever over his people. How can this happen? The Holy Spirit will make it happen. In fact, your relative Elizabeth is going to have a baby, even though she is old and people thought she could not have children. That's because what God says will always come true. I serve the Lord. 
May it happen to me, just as you said it would. Mary must have had so many questions, but she chose to trust God. She wanted to see for herself how God was working. So she took a trip to see her cousin Elizabeth. It would have taken days of hard travel, but at last she arrived in the hill country of Judea where Zechariah and Elizabeth lived. Elizabeth, it's so good to see you. God has blessed you more than any other women and blessed is the child you will have. But why is God so kind to me? Why has the mother of my Lord come to me? Well, how, how did you know? As soon as I heard the sound of your voice, the baby inside me jumped for joy. You are a woman God has blessed. You believed that the Lord would keep his promises to you. Mary stayed with Elizabeth several months. During that time, the joy in her heart overflowed. My soul gives glory to the Lord. My spirit delights in God, my Savior. He's taken note of me even though I'm not considered important. And after three months, Mary went home. Soon after that, it was time for Elizabeth to have her baby! All of Zachariah and Elizabeth's relatives turned up to celebrate. Oh, hi there, little Zachariah. No, he must be called John. Oh, but no one else in the family has that name. Everyone turned to Zachariah to get his say, but of course, he still couldn't talk. So he gestured for something to write with. Zachariah wrote, his name is John. And immediately, he could speak. <coughs> John, his, his name is John, praise God. Everyone was filled with amazement and the news spread throughout the whole region as they asked, what is this child going to be? The end, or at least to be continued. Can you imagine if an angel showed up right here? That would trigger some adrenaline for sure. <laughs> or imagine being Mary or Elizabeth. Mary thought it was impossible for her to have a baby, and Elizabeth thought it was impossible for her because of her age. But anything is possible with God. So what's our part in the story? Well, we all have things in our lives that seem pretty impossible. Maybe your mom and dad really want to do a family hike up a tall mountain, and you feel like there's no way you can make it. Or maybe your best friend moved away, and you won't get to see her until next summer and it feels totally impossible to wait. Or maybe you have a ginormous book report or a really hard test. You know, when something feels overwhelming and impossible, stop, take a deep breath. Remember how God has done the impossible. Like giving a baby to Zachariah and Elizabeth. Or parting the Red Sea so the Israelites could walk right through it. Or creating the entire universe. Exactly. You can even think of times when God has done something that seemed impossible for someone in your family, or even you. Ask God to give you courage and strength to keep going, knowing anything is possible with God. I feel like I could climb a ginormous mountain right now. Hey, go for it! I'll see you guys next time. Bye, Bye. Erica. At Christmas time, we talk about a lot of miracles, but I want you guys to remember that God can always do things that seem impossible. Not just at Christmas time, God can always do the impossible. Have you guys ever had something in your life that seemed impossible, but God was able to help you with it? If you have, why don't you tell somebody about it? Tell your mom, tell your friends, tell somebody about a time that God did something that seemed impossible. And I've got two more things before we go. One, we're still talking about Advent, which is getting ready for the birth of Jesus. And this week we're talking about love. And so I want you guys to think about how much God loves you. Really, Jesus coming down to earth as a human to help us and to save us, that's the biggest gift of love that anyone, anywhere could ever have given us. And I think that's super awesome. And I also want to talk about our memory verse, which comes from the book of Luke, which yes, that's where our Bible lesson was from today. It's Luke chapter two, verse 14. And it says, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to men on whom his favor rests. 
I'm going to read it one more time. Luke 2, 14. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. So I can't wait to see you guys next week, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.